Everyone, this is a great bluegrass tune. This is Big Mon, named after the great Bill Monroe himself. Here we go. Welcome to the melody tutorial for Big Mon, which is uh, named after, it was the nickname for the father of bluegrass music, Bill Monroe. Uh, Big Mon was what people called him. He was a big guy. He was, uh, he was tall and, and strong. And uh, there's a few pictures of him out there carrying his entire band, I think, just with his own two arms. So. Um, we're gonna play his tunes. I'm not saying that you actually have to accomplish any of his same feats of strength, but we can certainly play the tunes and uh, pay homage to him that way. So we're gonna do this tune. It is in the key of A, and it's another one of our one of our favorites, those flat seven tunes. And so that means that it goes to the chord that is the flat seven do seventh degree of the scale which is a lot of gobbledygook just to say that it goes back and forth from A to G to A to G a lot. And it gives it that kind of cool, lonesome sound um, that we like in bluegrass. And this tune structurally is a little questionable in terms of uh, the parts and which ones we do and which ones we don't do. So I'm gonna try to lay it out as best I can and give you the most practical advice I can, which is that there is, if you listen to the performance video, I went through it two times. I did two A's, two B's, and then two C's. And the C parts are actually like half parts. So it's almost like two A's, two B's, one C, or two short C's, whatever, something like that. And then I went back and did it again in kind of a more advanced style, and I did two A's and two B's, and I didn't do the C's. And so then you may be thinking through that and watching it and going, wait, what happened to that other part? So when you're playing this tune in a jam, more often than not these days, people just don't even play the C part. They've sort of homogenized it to, because people never knew if people were gonna play the C part. Why was that up for debate? I mean, aren't tunes just sometimes three parts long and some tunes are two parts? Well, it's up for debate because on the original recording, on the Bill Monroe recording, they only play the C part one time and only the fiddle players play it. And so there was never really this definitive thing of like, that's definitely in the tune. Well, it's like, well, the fiddle players played it. Now we are fiddle players. So maybe one might argue that it is our job to know the C part and play the C part. To that end, I'm gonna teach you the C part. And then when you're in a jam, the best thing to do if somebody calls this tune is say, hey, are we doing C parts? And if they go, what C part? Well, then you know the answer is no. But if they go, well, I mean, if you wanna do it, you know, you're the fiddle player, you know, maybe they, they know the original recording and they know that, then you can bust out the C part because you watched this video and you learned it. So there you go. So it's just a, another little thing to have in your arsenal, but just be aware that, you know, it's not often gonna come up, but it might sometimes. So all that said, we're gonna start with the A part. So we're gonna go O, O, one, two, one, O. Then we're gonna do three, two, three, O, one, O, three. So let's put that together. Ready, go. And then I wanna connect to this next section. So put it just a D2 right there. So. Now we're gonna go to D1 and walk up. One, two, oh, one, two. Three, oh, one, two, one, oh. 
and back down. Three, two, one, oh. So it's. Now, sometimes I do the two, one, oh, sometimes I just do two, oh, like that. And I like them both, so it's kind of hard for me to choose, but. You can do that or. Either way, they both work. So here's this section all together. You ready? Ready, go. All right. Welcome to the advanced tutorial for Big Mon, the Bill Monroe tune that I guess, if you look at it, he named after himself. So now that I think about it, he did write it and it is named after his nickname. So yeah, I guess that's it. All right, fine. I'm leaving here and writing Megan's Waltz. I'll be right back. Um, I didn't really know you could name a tune after yourself, but now that I think about it, who says you can't? I'm into it. All right, uh, we are gonna do, we're gonna mostly work on the A and the B parts because as I talked about in the melody tutorial, the C part is sort of nebulous. Most people don't do it in jams. It might come up. If you're gonna do it though, just stick to the melody, play what's there. Not, not too much to, that, you know, to really change about it. So I would definitely learn it though. Go back to the melody tutorial, learn that, and then tack it on if you need it uh, to the, some of the stuff that I'm showing you here. Okay, so we're gonna just sort of take the basic melody. We're gonna add fourth finger slides because that's always the first, the, the first thing that we do right out of the gate. Triplet. Now. The G sharp would actually be, the high three would be technically correct, but because we've got so many of those G naturals in there, just put that in there. Two, two, oh, two, four. Now, that is a lick or a, an approach that I tend to refer to as a deep dish lick because you're kind of, you're going up to sort of the rim and then back down into the dish, right? So you're gonna do 